This video was brought to you by Boomer Juice. We're going to talk about a mad lad that I actually have some respect and admiration for, which will make a refreshing change from the other mad lads we've spoken about. Despite my admiration, this gentleman was so mad that the term mad even made it into his nickname. Mad Jack Churchill. John Malcolm Thorpe Fleming Churchill was born in Sri Lanka in 1906 and in his youth his family moved around to many places ranging from England to Hong Kong. He was educated at the Isle of Man King Williams College and then graduated from the Royal Military College of Sandhurst. He was then deployed in Burma with the Manchester Regiment and he spent his free time motorcycling around Burma. He left the army in 1936 where he worked as a newspaper editor in Kenya and also a male model. He also landed a few small acting roles in the movies The Thief of Baghdad and A Yank at Oxford and in his spare time he practised his two favourite hobbies archery and the bagpipes. He became so good at bagpipes and archery that he came second place in the 1938 Aldershot Tattoo Piping Competition and even represented Britain at the World Archery Championships the very next year. This sounds very straightforward, it's just a tale of a military man travelling the world and indulging in his hobbies and you, you might be asking yourself, what is so mad about this guy? Well, the madness was sleeping within him, waiting to be awoken by a certain event and that certain event took place on the 3rd of September, 1939. This morning, the British ambassador in Berlin handed the German government a final note stating that unless we heard from them by 11 o'clock, that they were prepared at once to withdraw their troops from Poland, a state of war would exist between us. I have to tell you now that no such undertaking has been received and that consequently this country is at war with Germany. Churchill went straight back into the army with Manchester Regiment and was deployed to France with the British Expeditionary Force. And when Churchill was deployed, he had three primary pieces of equipment. His basket-hilted longsword, his bow and arrows and his bagpipes. Why a sword? Well, Jack is quoted as saying any officer who goes into action without his sword is improperly dressed. While in France, Churchill and his men ambushed a German patrol and to signal the beginning of the attack, Churchill raised his sword in the air. Churchill, during the battle, was also able to kill a German soldier by hitting him in the neck with a barbed arrow. Can you imagine how angry that German soldier must have been? He's sitting there armed with machine guns, rifles and what was at the time, advanced weaponry. And then he gets popped off by some bagpipe playing maniac with a weapon that some historians believe has been around for about 64,000 years. That's just embarrassing. During the Battle of Dunkirk, Mad Jack was shot in the neck by a German machine gun and he also managed to save a wounded British officer from a German ambush and for this, Mad Jack received the Military Cross for bravery. After the evacuation of Dunkirk, Mad Jack volunteered for the commandos. He became second in command of three commando and took part in a mission to raid a German garrison in Norway. The mission was called Operation Archery. <laughs> Fuck's sake. When they landed on shore and the doors of the landing craft fell, Mad Jack immediately started playing March of the Cameron Men on his bagpipes. He then threw a grenade and charged at the enemy line with his sword. The German garrison fell and German soldiers and the artillery batteries were captured and for this Mad Jack received his second military cross. This is an unconfirmed rumour but apparently the newly captured German POWs when they were questioned as to why their machine gunners didn't shoot this raven lunatic charging up the beach with a sword, they said that they thought he was mentally unwell and didn't shoot him out of pity. I don't know if that's true though because it kind of shows the Nazis showing compassion. He was then deployed to Italy, where he was the commanding officer of two commando and they made landings at both Salerno and Catania and on both occasions Mad Jack started playing his bagpipes and charged the enemy with his sword. 
The whole objective was to destroy German observation posts and artillery posts in the cities of Pigiletti and Salerno, and despite being massively outnumbered, Mad Jack deployed a very clever tactic. He would spread out his men as evenly as he could around the German encampments, and then at night, he would get them all at once to fire at the German encampment while screaming commando at the top of their lungs. Mad, Mad Jack doesn't really do stealth missions. But this tricked the Germans into thinking that they were facing a much larger force than they actually were, so the Germans shit themselves and surrendered. This resulted in the 50 men of 2 Commando capturing 136 German prisoners and Mad Jack received a Distinguished Service Order. During this mission, Mad Jack actually lost his sword in hand-to-hand -hand combat, so he was going back into the city so that he could retrieve his sword. While he was travelling there, he bumped into an American patrol who were actually heading in the wrong way towards enemy lines. When Mad Jack told them they were going the wrong way, they refused to listen and they were going to carry on regardless. Mad Jack then said he was going his own way and he said to them, I'm not coming back a bloody third time. <laughs> that, that's extremely British. Then Mad Jack and the commandos were deployed to Yugoslavia where they teamed up with local partisans so that they could attack German positions on the island of Brack in the Adriatic Sea. However, while assaulting Point 622, the partisans and the commandos suffered heavy casualties and ultimately it ended up with Mad Jack alone, with no ammo and surrounded by Germans. But instead of trying to run or hide, Mad Jack started playing Will Ye No Come Back Again? on his bagpipes. Mad Jack was then knocked unconscious by a grenade, captured by the Germans and flown to Berlin for interrogation because they thought, due to his last name, he was a relative of Winston Churchill and he was then transferred to Saxonhaus in concentration camp. Mad Jack and an RAF officer managed to squeeze under the wire of the camp and escape and they were trying to make their way to the Baltic coast, however they were captured again by the Germans on the way there. Mad Jack was then transferred to a new camp in Austria, but there's two different versions of the story as to how he escaped from this second camp. One story says that one night in the camp all of the lights failed, so Mad Jack used the cover of darkness to just squeeze under the wire again. But another version of the story is apparently while he was being transferred by the German army with other prisoners, the prisoners told the German officer that the SS were going to execute them. The German officer apparently asked the SS, are you going to execute these prisoners? The SS officer said yes. And then the German officer apparently refused to hand the prisoners over for their safety. And the SS, apparently realising that they were outnumbered by the German army, backed off and left. And then after that, the German army just released the prisoners. I'm really not sure if that one's true, but a part of me kind of hopes it is. Mad Jack then walked for 150 miles through the Alps, surviving on little scraps of food he could find as he went, until he eventually managed to make his way to Italy, where he bumped into an American armoured division. At that point, he was then sent back to England. The war in Europe by this point had pretty much ended, which really pissed Mad Jack off because he still had a lot of fight in him, but fortunately for Jack, the Battle of the Pacific was still raging on, so Mad Jack decided to hop on a plane to Burma so that he could join in the fight there. But do you know what happened as soon as Mad Jack arrived? On August the 6th, 1945, two American Super Fortress bombers arrived over the Japanese city of Hiroshima on the world's most devastating military mission. As you know, the Japanese immediately surrendered, which brought the war to an end. Mad Jack was fucking furious, and he's even quoted as saying, If it wasn't for those damned Yanks, we could have kept the war going for another ten years. But even though World War II had ended, Mad Jack had not seen the end of combat. Mad Jack was transferred to Sea Force Highlanders and he was deployed to Palestine with 1st Battalion Highland Light Infantry. He was present at what was called the Hasada Medical Convoy Massacre, where Arab forces opened fire on a Jewish medical convoy, killing many people. Mad Jack, while under extremely heavy fire, just walked up to the medical convoy with a giant smile on his face and his kilt on like a real man, and offered the medical convoy assistance. There was roughly 150 insurgents in the attacking Arab forces, and Mad Jack only had 12 men, and Mad Jack was also under strict orders not to get Britain involved in the conflict. So what did Mad Jack do? You know what he fucking did. So during the gun battle that had kicked off between Jack's men and the Arab forces, Jack managed to coordinate an evacuation of 700 people from the medical convoy and from Hasada Hospital. And in Jack's honour, the street 
leading to the hospital was renamed to Churchill Boulevard. Mad Jack then finally retired from the army in 1959 with two awards of the Distinguished Service Order. He then spent his retirement years... surfing. He was the first person to ride the River Severn's five-foot tidal bore, and he also designed his own surfboard. Because... <laughs> because why the fuck not? Churchill then passed away in England on the 8th of March 1996 at the age of 89 years old. You can't help but respect a man who brings a sword to a gunfight and fucking wins. <laughs> fucking mad lad. It's Count Dankula on YouTube. Everybody should subscribe.